There we go. Yeah. Sorry. So we were talking about the relativity equation in simple low dimensional theories of gravity and in particular dilaton gravity and how in a, an example of a theory which is for which we know how to do non-perturbative quantization of the Euclidean theory, the corresponding picture that comes out of canonical quantization just seems inadequate. It has right. nothing to do with there being other excitations like right. what you would have in a string theory or anything. It's yeah. just the seeming inability of the canonical picture to capture topology change, um, which is what I wanted to get to. Uh, so in some sense, it really looks like the wheel of equation needs, needs to be corrected at some non-trivial, non-perturbative level. Um, and this is what uh, is actually a problem that I'm currently thinking about in the context of this Billiton gravity theory. So, yeah, yeah uh, let's, if you don't mind, uh, I, could, I could send you a, an image which actually describes in two-dimensional ADS space what the ADM Hamiltonian does. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a true Hamiltonian, unlike what happens with, um, just escape. Yeah, unlike what happens in the generic case when you have non-trivial asymptotic boundaries, there is right. a true Hamiltonian. Right. Um, and this this Hamiltonian has um, an action on states, and generates mm -hmm. true time evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in that sense, the problem of time is evaded if you only concern yourself with quantities that track with the evolution. Uh, of the, the, the track, um, the clock at it, at infinity. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, if you can just phrase every question of interest in terms of those clocks, then there's mm -hmm. no problem with time. Right. Um, and uh, that's also the basis of understanding what happens in, in holography in a lot of settings. Because mm -hmm. there too, uh, you just have an asymptotic structure that's not trivial, and then there's a time there, like a direction of time right. and you know you can just um, uh, use that so yeah. let's put a picture on the chat the workplace chat which you can pull onto this screen uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, did I get it no not yet okay yeah got it in the group yeah. chat. Yeah. Do you see it? So you see, this is the kind of process that the um, that the Hamiltonian in the canonical picture is adequate okay. to describe. Mm -hmm. The bottom right corner there. Right. So you have a time slice, and then you evolve it with the Hamiltonian. Right. Um, right, and, and then you're good. Right. But you see, what this doesn't capture is the following, mm -hmm. which I'll show you. So this is the picture from canonical quantization, but then you can just do the Euclidean path integral. Right. And there are some settings where you can actually do the Euclidean path integral non-perturbatively. Mm -hmm. And this theory of dilaton gravity, jacob dilaton gravity is one such theory. Mm -hmm. And there what you find is the following. Uh, you get a whole series involving a sum over 
different topologies uh, right. that you'll see that Rahul will pull up soon. So yeah. now, if you want, if you want, we can expand this image and ponder what to do. Um, and you immediately see why this is non-trivial. Um, so you want to introduce some kind of slicing, you know, onto this disk. Right. And the the disk on the all the way on the left is basically the uh, lower, the Euclidean version of something like this uh, square up here. Right. Okay. So in, in, in Euclidean signature, it looks like this disk. And as far as um, going from one signature to the other is concerned, this evolution that we're seeing here is just described by, you know, evolving by time slices along that disk. Right. So it, there, it's kind of similar. Uh, you just have the time slice; it goes unobstructed. But once you get to this regime of the trumpet and the Mm -hmm. And this donut and these uh, multi-hole surfaces attaching right. to this trumpet. You right. see that what has to happen. So if you could start drawing lines left to right, you know, so vertical right. lines going top to down. But yeah, so you want to draw uh, a vertical sorry, line. You're breaking up to bottom. Like okay, top to, to bottom. To right, just so that and we get a picture right. of what we need. Yeah. Uh, okay. You're breaking up, sorry. Uh, this is what you want me to do? So, so you want to take, oh, no, no, uh, go top to bottom. Top to bottom, okay. Yeah, top to bottom. Okay. Yeah, and then just continue. So draw by vertical lines all the way to the right, sort of filling in the image. See, this is where it becomes interesting. Mm. Now I rotate this figure by 90 degrees so that the disc is at the bottom and the hole is on top. Uh, okay. How do I do this? Oh, it got rid of all your, all your editing. So maybe <laughs> undo that. Sorry. Okay, let's no, just it leave gets... it there. Okay. Yeah, but it's not. I mean, but anyway, imagine time is running from left to right. Okay. Yeah. So, so we pick some slicing. Now you see. Uh, yeah, but but you see, you can already see that um, right there's here. this peculiarity where. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. As this surface splits, you mm -hmm. need to know how the Hamiltonian acts across. Uh, so first you need to understand the process of the splitting mm -hmm. of this uh, slice. So topology right. change. And then right. you need to understand how it rejoins, right? Right. So uh, you need a kind of third quantization. This is what it's called. You need, you need okay. to understand how these surfaces. So the Wheeler David equation just tells you how, you know, within a given, within a given patch of uh, space mm -hmm. time is also give me a slice of space. I'll tell you how to deform it. Right? I'll tell you how mm -hmm. to deform it in some normal direction. If I can deparametrize it, I can mm -hmm. tell you how to evolve it. But mm -hmm. it doesn't give me information about what happens at these kinds of splits. Naively, from just the classical equations of motion, that's not allowed. Uh, mm -hmm. Classically, this topology change is not allowed. Um, right. And in Lorentz and signature, any such topology change um, actually creates singularities at the point at which it splits or at the point exactly. at which it joins. Mm -hmm. So this is a very um, peculiar situation one finds in, when you find yourself in uh, because, yeah, what, what's happening is that these, um, yeah, so, so th these lines are a bit misleading because it makes you think that this disk is solid. Actually, what it is is a trumpet. So right. these lines are kind of like circles that you're following. 
Oh. Um, uh, but still, you still get the point that as right. you go, this kind of uh, splits and joins, and then it only gets more complicated as there's higher genus. Right. And so, in this sense, relative quantization is just inadequate. Hmm. Yeah. It just doesn't tell you. So, so you, you, you've managed to overcome the problem of time, right? By hmm. doing some deparameters, using some global uh, hmm. clock. But hmm. you haven't managed to account for the non-perturbative gravitational effects. Um, and this is not like, you know, it's non-perturbative in a much, in a different sense than people mean when they say, oh, you're, you know, you're just doing fluctuations around the background. Um, it's not perturbative in the sense that you have this kind of topology changing process. Mm -hmm. So this, you see, to get the entropy of a black hole, the, the fine grained entropy of a black hole in mm -hmm. these theories, you can actually mm -hmm. do it with the bottom panel. Like the, the Euclidean theory can actually give you that. Mm -hmm. The Lorentzian theory cannot. Cannot. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to. Or at least that's the contention of uh, Daniel Harlow and Daniel Jeffries in this paper they wrote. Right. in 2018 mm -hmm. and um that's uh that's just it's just a lesson right that, that mm -hmm. you need to account for that yeah so mm -hmm. what do these topology changing processes allow you to do you can wonder mm -hmm. why does it feature into the uh into black hole entropy mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so i'll show another picture um yeah which which captures this uh Uh, the other's gone. Now it's yeah, just us. I think you're joining back. <laughs> he has the most crazy tech adventures. <laughs> <laughs> Entropy of Hawking radiation. Um, so there's there are such things known as replica wormholes. And right. It seems that these replica wormholes are all essential in order to capture the the correct behavior of black hole evaporation. Mm -hmm. um, so to be able to reproduce a fine-grained entropy formula that corrects Bekenstein and Hawking's entropy formula, right. you need to account in your calculation for these very peculiar geometries, mm -hmm. which involve um, what are called these replica wormholes. Okay. And for two replicas, this is sort of what they look like. A I'll trumpet? Or no? No, no, no. So very generically. Ha, huh, I have it here. I'll just move it. Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, Pradeus, how are you? Hi, guys. Hey. Yeah, we're talking about replicas, replica wormholes. But the, I mean, what they are is a long story. The only point I'm trying to make here is that they are important for the calculation of the right mm. black hole entropy. Uh, the, use this entropy formula, there is no information loss, let's put it that way. So, right. so you see, you need to be able to sew together these uh, these kinds right. of geometries, these pieces of space with these funny wormholes, which are also topology changing processes, which yeah, which you need to account for. The Euclidean theory can account for. So mm. there's another picture that shows you what it does. Um, so. I should probably be yelling out the references from which all of these come from. However, that would take a very long time, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. There we go. So it also shows you. Oh, just give me a second. So in the okay yeah so so you see the naive calculation of black hole entropy involves only one of those cigars whereas mm -hmm. um, what you what you need in order to get the right entropy formula is this kind of connected geometry 
And right. in all these situations, the canonical theory. So what, what would the canonical theory allow you to do? So let's take this Hawking saddle picture. Yeah. It would allow you to go around the cigar. You see, you can sort of go from I to J by rolling around the cigar. But it's not going to tell you, it doesn't right. necessarily know that there's this other one hanging outside. It doesn't know that they can join. Right. Um, and that's what you, that, that seems to be a weakness of the conventional canonical approach. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I, this is also why uh, I'm now very suspicious, suspicious of the claims of being able to compute the black hole entropy from loop quantum gravity, which seems to only uh, know about the canonical approach and doesn't even understand that you don't even understand the dynamics very well. So you don't actually know how to solve the relativity equation in that picture. So mm -hmm. it's not entirely clear what those claims mean. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas here, this, believe it or not, you can take these configurations into account in just the semi-classical regime. So you don't actually need a full theory of quantum gravity. It's nice when you have something like Jacob Dewar quantum gravity, where you can substantiate some, some claims and some expectations, right. but you don't need to go that far. Uh, even just in a classical gravity, you can, you can get the general fine grain entropy formula out of this. I keep saying, fine, this is a culmination of a lot of people's efforts, uh, but mostly it came together with um, Netta Engelhardt and Aaron Wall. Um, and then there was Jeffrey Pennington. And yeah, Jeffrey Pennington's going to win the New Horizons Prize this year, I think, for this work. I see. Oh, OK. And for reference, he graduated same time as me. So I'll maybe see this oh. guy's <laughs> At least I don't have to compete with him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could we could probably link the paper. Um, yeah, well, I, I can link a review paper that goes over this in mostly words. Um, yeah, so let's see. Yeah, I'm getting these from a number of papers, but the black hole story is in the paper that I'm just going to send to you guys here. Yeah, so that is the entropy formula for the right for the radiation for Hawking for, for the radiation of uh, coming from Hawking quanta. What this sigma rad union sigma island means is that you actually have to take into account mm -hmm. the entropy just semi-classical entropy of modes that sit inside the black hole. You have to kind mm. of uh, take the interior into account in this calculation. Mm. Uh, and that's sort of how, it's, it's a big part of how the uh, information isn't really lost. Uh, it's not the entire interior. There's a very uh, specific region that you, uh, you refer to as this island, which, right. um, which captures uh, okay. missing information, so to speak. <clears throat> also described though. The yeah, region. so a picture, again, mm -hmm. good, good. Uh, so I'll, I'll share another picture mm -hmm. which captures um, the idea. I, I like this, we're just going through these pictures. <laughs> you don't have to go through uh, the whole story. Although it's not all that complicated, I actually find it, yeah, especially this reference that I just added to the workplace chat. It's, it's right. pretty readable. Um, uh, let me just open that. There we go. The entropy of radiation. Oh. Oh, Maldacena. Okay. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> Good, so go down to page 32. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. 
exactly. So this right. describes what happens with this island region. Well, actually, they don't describe the island, they just describe the entanglement wedges, which also requires a lot of words to explain. But actually, if you scroll up to 28, they explicitly show you what the sigma ra radiation and sigma island are. Uh, sorry, I took you to the wrong picture. So you see, whatever this island is, is crucial in order for you to be able to capture the right physics. Right. So you see there's this <laughs> funny region inside. Mm -hmm. The dotted diagonal line is the horizon. This right. um, fuzzy line going bottom to top is uh, an arbitrary cutoff surface, they call it. It's, uh, okay. Its position doesn't matter too much. It just has to be outside the horizon. Okay. Um, and this sigma radiation is a Cauchy slice of an external ex observer, so someone sitting on the outside. So if you only right. accounted for that, uh, that, uh, that outside observer, then you would get um, a picture mm -hmm. that looks like figure 15. Yeah, so uh, come down to page 29, yeah. the next page. You see uh, mm -hmm. this green line? Mm -hmm. Well, what this is describing is the uh, evolution of the entropy of radiation with time. Right. And the evolution of the entropy would just go from zero, where there's no Hawking radiation, they'll mm. just grow, right? Mm. If I didn't know anything, I'd just be like, oh, it just keeps coming out. This is how people thought that information was lost. Yeah. You know, it's thermal entropy thermal entropy that grows with the number of particles. So, right. you know, too bad. Mm. This dotted diagonal line going from top right to the bottom mm. is what you would expect if you just knew A over 4G, right? The right. black hole entropy being A over 4G. Right. The area of the black hole starts as something and then it just keeps decreasing as it evaporates. Decreasing. Both of these True. pictures are bad, right? This is yes. information loss, information loss. Yeah. What you want is a curve that goes from up to, say, T1 and to this yeah. vertex of the triangle formed by yeah. the green and uh, dotted line. And then it dips. And then back. It turns yeah. over and starts to come down. Right. That's called the page curve. And that's yeah. described on page 30. Right here. You see this bottom right figure with the black triangle. That is roughly the shape of the page curve. The actual shape depends on the details of the calculation, but essentially what you want is something where as the black hole is evaporating, it grows, but then there's going to be a competition between the area of the black hole and the radiation, mm -hmm. the thermal entropy of the radiation. When right. these balance out, you want there to be uh, a dip. Right. right. <laughs> Right. You want somehow the entropy of the radiation to start to decrease. So somehow it has to get purified. How it right. gets purified is a very complicated process. It involves something called the PETS map. And there's some mm -hmm. deep stuff going on there. But, but essentially, mm -hmm. how it's accounted for is by this okay. island region, the, the interior mm -hmm. region. Mm -hmm. So as that interior region grows, you, you're basically calculating the thermal entropy of excitations within that region. Mm -hmm. And so you see from T2 to T3, the left hand side, the region is growing. Right? So Sorry? it starts off and then it starts to grow. Uh, uh, didn't the catch you there. Yeah. Left hand picture. Mm -hmm. so, so the left hand picture, there's this T2 right. and T3, right? It's right. blue line. That shows what I'm trying to explain, which is that this island region is growing. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're, you're trying to capture the entropy of excitations in the union of the blue lines and mm -hmm. the black lines. Mm -hmm. And they're disconnected regions. Right. The boundary of the blue line is called a quantum extremal surface. It gets closer and closer and closer to the horizon. So the mm -hmm. important quantity is not the area of the horizon. The important quantity is the one that you just uh, well, we just described, this generalized entropy, this right. um, 8.2, 8 8.2, which is on page 27. Um, and that, that's sort of how this gets resolved. But where this island comes from is intimately tied to these replica wormholes. You can't get that without 
uh, these replica wormholes. Okay. So, I mean, it, it's not like it was just put in by hand. I mean, you mm. could say if I put it in by hand, then there'd be no information loss. But that's not yeah. satisfactory, right? You can pick yeah. up all kinds of crazy stories. Right. The real reason why you can actually do a calculation that points to this expression, you know, that, that mm -hmm. actually gives you this as a result. Mm -hmm. That calculation involves these replica wormholes. They, they, they need to be added. They're the ingredient on top of Hawking's original derivation. So very ironically, what would, so, you know, I, I written a paper like a long time ago about calculating this black hole entropy in a, a modified gravity theory called shape dynamics using the Euclidean uh, path integral. And we thought, yeah, it's a trick, you know, like, I ah, really, you should be doing Hawking's derivation, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Turns out that no, it turns out that this seems to capture the right, the right quantity. Hawking's derivation is not. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 very. Um, this is this is the new and exciting stuff in you know in the physics of black holes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. um, and and that, that again intimately tied to needing these kinds of wormholes to exist and needing right. uh, interesting topology changing processes to occur. And right. all of that sits as a challenge to the the canonical pictures doing a little bit of quantization. It needs to be expanded. Right. And, and this and is actually like, something that we're working on. Yeah. And like writers. before this, like um, I don't know if I if you remember, I told you about how um, I attended this talk by Maldacena, and then from there on uh, did some reading and like. Uh, like wormholes like were brought into the theory but they seemed like they didn't fit in uh of course it was not uh, -huh. uh these kinds uh that we just spoke about today uh hello can you hear me yeah 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 so yeah but now to see it uh yeah or like <laughs> not you know just fit in to solve the uh, information paradox uh, and you know kind of uh, constrained to be there um, it's really interesting yeah well i should i should make it clear i should make it clear that you're not actually getting these uh, so the wormholes are not carrying the information outside right exactly I know it look like that but that's not what's yeah happening. exactly where yeah. they come in is in this replica calculation so what you do with path mm -hmm. integrals to calculate entropies is right. So, so there's an entropy formula for von Neumann entropy, which is the trace of rho log rho, rho being yeah. the density matrix. Yeah. Nobody can calculate the density matrix in an arbitrary region in quantum field theory. Right. So instead you use a trick. The trick mm. is called the replica trick. Mm. And I can get a picture of that too. What you do yeah. is you first calculate the partition function, the Euclidean path integral on mm -hmm. a so-called replicated geometry. Um, so I'll, I'll get a picture for you because mm -hmm. it's, it's worth understanding. There, there's a bit of it that, um, that is explained in this, uh, in this paper that we, we had open, but the mm -hmm. general picture looks like this. Um, again, mm -hmm. I'm going to drop it in. Size. Okay, Pratyut had to check out. Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, I'm sorry, like I'll just stay on for another 10 minutes, but then I gotta leave, so. Okay, no worries. No worries. Yep. See you, bye. See you. Okay, I got it. Great, so so this yeah. is what, you, oh, I, I sent it a few times. I apologize. I can just yeah, no worries. Remove. Yeah, anyway. Um, it got sent many, many times. It's just being slow. Yeah, so, so this picture is what, um, is what describes what normally happens. Right. So you just consider a region. So, so you see this plane is your original space time. Mm -hmm. This little box, right, is going to be the region 
that you want to pay attention to, which means everything else is what you want to trace out. Right. right? You know, the entanglement entropy is calculating how entangled that region in the box is with the rest of the space. You want right. to think that there's a horizontal line that runs mm. from left to right through the box, which is where the state lives. Right. Because right. this is a space-time picture. The right. parallelogram is a space-time, and right. space runs from left to right a line. Just so that 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 would be the picture. And what you're trying to say is that on that line, I cut out the middle, and I want to ignore everything else. Right. So how mm -hmm. entangled is the quantum field? Are the quantum fields in the middle with right. the rest? So yeah, just draw a line starting yeah. from the left and touching the corner of this box. Yeah. Right. and going through very good yeah. very good so you see the region that rahul's drawing is what i want to trace out as, right. the, as the terminology goes and right. you're, you're interested in understanding how entangled the quantum fields in the middle are with mm -hmm. the region that you've just drawn that's the question right. you're trying to answer so you first right. start by calculating the entanglement entropy or uh, calculating the partition function on this crazy geometry you do the path integral imagining this thing is your space. Right. What are these purple sheets? These purple sheets are basically identifications, it's saying I glued the edge of that top box to the bottom box. I glued oh, the edge of okay. the bottom box to this other box. See? Right. So I'm just replicating the space. Right. right. That's right. the usual replica trick. You can do that okay. in the case mm -hmm. of, uh, and then the, the entanglement entropy comes from taking the limit as there's only one replica. You take some kind of funny derivative and then you take this limit. Mm -hmm. This is uh, many words for um, an otherwise simple calculation. But now, when you have these replica wormholes, what I want you to draw is basically okay. So just if you want to draw something, yeah, no, um, just call it the replica trick. Yeah, go on. Yeah, exactly. This is the conventional replica trick. Yeah, replica wormholes are wormholes between these spaces between oh, okay. these replicas. So, so you draw one wormhole from top layer to bottom, and then another one from the middle to the bottom. Oh, middle to the bottom? <laughs> Sorry. There. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... I mean, it's fine. So, yeah. so you're going to have a... You're gonna, well, there's going to be one from top to middle, and there's going to be another one from... But those are the wormholes that are being added into this picture. Uh, okay. So here's another visualization, um, which might be better than what we're trying to uh, depict here. I'll just send it on the Google. It'll take some time, but you you'll get it. Uh, so you see, your your physical entanglement entropy comes from taking the limit as there's only one replica. So these replica wormholes are kind of going, they're going to vanish. They're, they're not going to be seen at the end of the day mm -hmm. uh, when you do the calculation. Their effects, the residual effects, this island, though, is the addition of this island in the entropy oh. calculation. OK. So it's very non-trivial how it all comes together. But um, nevertheless, you need to know how this works. Like you need to be able to calculate your path integral on a space that's, you know, has these non-trivial handles. Right. And you know, the, that's another situation where these uh, ordinary canonical techniques break down. They, they don't mm -hmm. seem to suffice. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very exciting because now you have to understand wormholes, baby universes, all kinds of other things. And right. You, you sort of need. <laughs> with that and that's that's something that i'm um yeah mm -hmm. that a few of us are thinking about but anyway there's, there's a, this is an area of active area of research um, right. right now mm -hmm. this is really the cutting mm -hmm. edge um but it's nice that it kind of boils down to these very I mean, cool pictures I, that I can yeah see. yeah there were a couple of couple of people uh the new postdocs i was talking to you about who actually talked about uh what uh -huh. just did but they just threw some jargons yeah, so this is what uh -huh. we're essentially doing, I see. Islands, wormholes, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. a very, very hot topic. Right. Um, uh, yeah. 
I'm a bit of a luddite. I didn't actually jump on this train, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mind being a, an admirer from afar because I, I'm, I'm more interested in the quantum gravity implications of this. And the quantum right. gravity implications of this are that we need to think about this third quantization. I, I'm being more and more convinced that that's what we need to do. Uh, right. So there is one theory where this is what's happened. This is what actually happens. You consider a sum over all possible world sheets. You have these mm -hmm. world sheets that are created and, and that's string field theory. Right. Um, so you want a version of string field theory uh, beyond, yeah, beyond <laughs> one plus one dimensions. Right. Um, so you, you want to be able to do calculations which involve the splitting and joining of these um, kinds of universes. So you want these interactions between spaces to correct right. your conventional picture. Right. And um, yeah, so the, that's actually cool. I think that that's actually new in, <laughs> In quantum gravity, many times you just circle around the same idea, yeah. But rarely do you actually find that there's something new something that you have, you have to account for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm trying to see if I can find a picture for you. Um, just, just uh, I just had a question. Sure. Um. So, uh, okay. Uh. So essentially, when um you're talking about like um finding the uh, so. Yeah, so I was going through um, this this thing in QFT recently. So where uh, you don't, even though you have like uh, time, uh, you have space-like separation uh, between two points. Yeah. And uh, your your uh, this thing, your uh, uh, like your propagator is not zero. Yeah. Yeah. So in the sense, yeah. So uh, is this what you mean by you know uh, finding the path integral between different space times? No. Or, so space-like separation is within the same space-time. Okay. I mean, there's just different spaces that join, <laughs> split. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, how how do like these different spaces like come about? Like, I mean, uh, like, is it just uh, some you know some form of connection between wormholes and stuff like that, or is it like? Um, so the full question, the full answer to your question, we don't know. Uh, why they're needed is tied to the first part of our discussion where uh, Rahul can actually go back to this. Um, uh -huh. His, yeah, so, so go up Rahul. Okay, cool. We'll talk about this picture in a bit, but um, yeah. So you see this middle picture with the lines. So we were trying to understand yeah. how to canonically approach a sum like this one, which involves a sum over topologies. Okay. You see, as you go from left to right in the middle picture, this trumpet yeah, with the yeah, donut yeah. attached, yeah. you're going to be going, you know, so you're going to be going like normal, okay? Then this space, uh, the, the hammer. And then suddenly you have some jump. Yeah. It, well, suddenly what's going to happen is that your space splits and yeah. you have two uh -huh. of these, and then it rejoins. Okay, okay. So, cool, so it's cool. kind of like a process involving creation and annihilation of particles, except this is with space itself. Space itself. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Like uh -huh. these regions here. And uh, that's all down, Rob. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you there? Are you stuck? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, hello, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. So come down. Could you scroll down? Yes. I'll explain the image that I just uh, dropped. Oh right, you just right, posted. right. Good. So so here, right? Uh, you could actually fill it in. So start with a propagator picture, and complete that to a cylinder, please. So you see, all of ordinary canonical quantization, when it comes to gravity, deals with such a process, right? Here, on the other hand. You're going to have a pair of pants. Perfect. You see? There it's going to be an inverted pair of pants. Very good. And here it just goes like a cap. <laughs> a cone. Yeah. Even just a cap. It doesn't have to be a cone. Um, could oh. be smooth. 
So yeah, it just right. ends. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Similarly, you could also have a so that is an anal the analog of the no boundary proposal. So, so the no boundary pro proposal, you just have a point to space, that kind of process. Right. So <laughs> no boundary proposal can also be described by the normal uh, rules of canonical quantization in gravity because there's no topology. Well, I wouldn't really call going from a point to some space a topology change or anything. But these merging, these branching and merging interactions, that's where it gets non-trivial. You, you need to correct the Wheeler-DeWitt equation to be able to do this. So okay. you see the Wheeler-DeWitt equation is analogous to your first quantization. Mm. Right, if I was thinking in terms of world lines, so could you just draw uh, the Feynman diagram analog of these pictures? Right. In mind. Just the first three. So the propagator is just going to be a line, bottom to top. Give me just a second. So it's the line. And here, this is going to be tree level. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's going to be the opposite. You basically have a two particles going into one. Perfect. Um, that one is just a, a tadpole. So a point attached to a loop. So point, a propagator, and a loop. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So now if I knew just quantum mechanics of the relativistic particle, I can just Describe right. the leftmost figure. The figure requires an additional piece of information, which is what's happening at the vertex, the middle two figures. Right. Same with the last figure. I can still describe it with quantum mechanics of a relativistic right. particle. That's called the world line formalism, where you basically quantize the world line, treat it like quantum mechanics, and then you add all these interactions from you know additional information. Mm -hmm. The analog of this is what you need in order to oh. complete the relativistic picture. Right. Yeah. Uh, did you say so something? You need to know what happens. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying that you need the analog of this, right? right. The um, the vertices, the vertex contributions in your really to bit picture. Right. That will give you these branching and merging interactions. Okay. Hmm. Right, so without that, it's just the thing called propagator. Uh, that's what. Uh, okay. So, how do we make those corrections? Uh, Is, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I want to figure it out. Um, in general, I have no idea. Uh, I think in the context of um, jacob tiedelbaum gravity, we might be able to work it out. But yeah, that, that, that's one of my projects now. Very right. figured out. Right. I guess we could oh. include uh, some resources with JD gravity as well, but later on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, again, it's all very, it's technical and then there's a long story, but the, the essential picture, all I wanted to convey was what, what, what we just described here, that what you right. would normally think is uh, the hardest problem. Oh, you want to solve the Wheeler DeWitt equation and then and then we'll be happy. No, yeah. it's not going to be enough. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it, 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 in fact, just trying to do that will, um, will limit you. It, it'll make you ignorant of um, even simple things like just extracting the correct fine-grained entropy of a black hole in the semi-classical yeah, yeah. theory. Yeah. And Euclidean and Lorentzian uh, signatures are different. Um, right. The Euclidean path integral seems to be very, very wise. Right. Whereas this right. Lorentzian time evolution is, it doesn't, it's not obvious. Right. Yeah.
um, Rahul, like, could you just scroll up a little bit up to the line splitting uh, diagram? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, wait. So I had a, a question here. So um, again, like, just 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 to get myself comfortable with this idea, right? Uh, so um, okay. One thing is you need some connection between. Uh, so like you need a connection between uh, like uh, the two surfaces, even and yeah. singularity. Right? I mean, in the sense you need to find out like what is um yeah so uh yeah there is a connection there is a connection that you're carrying all along as you move forward in time and then suddenly it's broken and you don't really know what like i mean like you don't really know how to connect the two pieces together right and this is not a pure uh gravitational case is it this particular it theory like has a dilaton as well the okay. dilaton gravity theory uh, but that doesn't matter. Even if it was pure gravity, you need to know how to do okay. this. Okay. So, okay. I mean, okay. Uh, so, I was just thinking of some way where, like, uh, you know, you preserve the connection even if you move across the similarity, right? I mean, like, um, can you do that? Because... Um, well, no, because you really want to understand points. this full picture. If there was a connection, that would just be a different process. Oh, I mean, okay. Cool. I, I mean, like, uh, there, there's obviously some sort of, um, um, I don't know, a reason for the singularity occurring, and the connection would be uh, giving the reason for the singularity. Kind. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I the fact is just the fact is just that if you have at your disposal classical equations of motion, then you can't have this. It's just bad, it's singular, like, you know, you can always set up a problem and say, ah, give me a space, can I solve the equations of motion with it? I okay. solve it, I just have to have some horrible source, it just doesn't make sense. So what you need to do is something a bit more sophisticated. Um, mm -hmm. the, the specific form of that really depends on the setting. Um, and, and that's where, you, yeah, that's where you need some cleverness, right? You need to know. <clears throat> whether you're going to do some analytic continuation type argument, whether you're going to do, you're going to introduce some rules, you some consistency conditions. So, so you need some more yeah. wisdom. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so that, that's basically the challenge here. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys want to discuss something else as well? This is pretty interesting. Offshoots of this maybe. <laughs> That's no, up to you. We have uh, we have someone new. Oh. Does she want to ask anything? Okay, Makshi. Um. Um, hi. Hey. Hi. I'm just uh, I'm just uh, listening to the conversation. I'm really not aware of the topic, so I just wanted to hear. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And super yeah, interesting, yeah. but yeah. I really need to read more on this so <laughs> yeah no no worries um, yes. but yeah, if you have any questions please let us know we're, we're actually trying to engage more people because exactly. we're bad yeah. at that no <laughs> no okay yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah that was nice i think i'll stop the recording now okay yeah, that was fun.